What up, everybody? This is episode number 10. Congratulations on making it this far. Yeah, that's about all I got for this one. We are going to be talking about Booleans, which is a type. So sort of like string or char or int. There is also the type bool. And the value can be true or false, which is a keyword in C++, so you don't have to use any quotes around it. So I'll show you some basic usage of Booleans and how to be more comfortable with them. But first I wanna say a special thank you to our sponsor of this video, C++ Builder. With their Community Edition IDE, you can get started with C++ development and it makes it so much easier for more complex projects, whether that's graphical user interfaces or if you just have some multi-file projects and you wanna make the whole process simple, definitely check them out. That's what we're using for this series, and I'll leave a link down below. Get started for free. So if you want to support this channel, check it out. So we're going to keep the code that we have, but we're not going to be building directly on this stuff right now. So let's just go ahead and move it all down. Instead of creating a new project or a new file, we'll just do it up here. What I want you to do is say C out, and you can actually use a comparison operator right here as an output. So let's try that. We'll say hello. And is this equal to hello? Now this is going to give us a warning, but don't really worry about that. This isn't something you would do in real life, but it's an interesting concept. This will evaluate to some value. Oh, that is actually important. So if you hover over this, it has higher precedence. So what that means is I forgot to surround this with parentheses. Basically what was happening is it was just outputting hello and then it was like, oh, what's this extra stuff at the end? But now since we put this in parentheses, parentheses always get evaluated first. So hello being equal to hello should evaluate to true and we will output the output. But the interesting thing here is you will actually see the output one instead of true. So one represents true and zero represents false. So if we went ahead and you change this comparison operator to not equals, this will invert it. And this is the warning that I originally thought it was, which is the results being unspecified. So that basically means it's unsure exactly what's going to happen or it's not defined. So it can depend, I guess, on compiler version or platform or something not entirely sure but you can see it, it's working in our case and this is just for illustration purposes we get a zero so that is true and false you can also output just true lowercase true and this will also output one so because there's no quotes around it it's in a boolean literal let me type that out boolean literal whenever you see the word literal it means the value typed out so this is a literal character this is a literal string this is a boolean literal if we put quotes around it it would no longer be a boolean variable but would become a string literal cannot type there we go which is different so make sure when you're working with booleans and you are trying to do logic that you don't accidentally add the parentheses because you could easily make a mistake in what you're comparing or what you're trying to do. So let's go through a more concrete example. Let's say we want to build that functionality if they've beat the game before. Now because we haven't really gotten to the capabilities of reading from files or databases, we will actually just ask the user, have you beat this game before? If you were building out a real game, you could actually save to a file that they beat the game whenever they beat the game. And then you could read back that data later when you run the code again. But let's just say that after they say they want to play a game, we could ask them if they've beat in the game already. So we'll say bool, which is the data type for a Boolean, beat game. And typically this will be written as like a question. You can imagine a question mark here, have you beat the game? And once we define this, we can then take input into that variable. So beat game. To do this, we will want to ask them a question so they know what to do with this. 
So C out, have you beat the game? And you can format this however you want. Let's just, as an example, create a new line and then say zero is no. And then another new line, one is yes. This is super ugly, so I don't know if I would keep the formatting like this, but just to show you, this should work. So let me just show you what it looks like. Make sure you don't have any errors yet. Do you want to play a game? Yes. Have you beat the game? Zero is no, one is yes. And then you could type in one of those values. So let's go ahead and check to see what they put. Since this is a Boolean variable, when we check it inside of an if statement, we don't have to compare it against anything. That is a little shortcut that is good to know. If you, for example, said beat game equal equal to true, just imagine for a second that beat game is true. It's kind of like saying if true is true, which does make sense, but this is just going to evaluate to true. So it's unnecessary typing. You can just type the variable name. If beat game, which is either true or false, then what are we gonna do? We'll just say C out. Because you beat the game, you can play impossible mode, just as an example. And then we'll just put a new line. And now you can use this later on. So going back to that and operator example we used in a previous video, if they said that they have beat the game, if difficulty is impossible and beat game is true, then we can output this, which could then allow you to further build out this if else if sequence. So else if difficulty is impossible and not beat game, which will invert it. This is the logical not operator. This will evaluate to true if beat game is false. So in this scenario, the difficulty is impossible, but they haven't beat the game yet, to which you could say you have to beat the game at least once. So let's just test this out, see how it's going so far. Let's say we do want to play a game. Have we beat the game? Let's go ahead and say yes. Because you beat the game, you can play impossible mode. Just say impossible, lol, good luck. First area of improvement, you could probably say after this here, use secret difficulty. And if you wanted to say quote it, you could use single quotes like this, and that should work fine. But if you wanted to use double quotes, it's going to confuse the parser because basically it looks like you're ending the initial double quotes. So here's the opening double quotes all the way to these closing double quotes. So you can escape them using a backslash, similar to how we do backslash n. When we do backslash quote, it's saying, hey, we want to use the actual double quote and not using this for the syntax. So we could do that for the end here as well, backslash double quote. So now we should see impossible in quotes, and then we can put a period and a new line. So let's run this. Do you wanna play a game? Yes. Let's play a game then, have you beat the game? Let's go ahead and say no. Or, no, I want to make sure that looks right. So let's go ahead and say yes. Because you beat the game, you can play impossible mode. Use secret difficulty, impossible. Perfect. And then we'll say impossible. A little good luck. Now let's try it where we have not beat the game, but we still type in impossible. Yes, we're going to play a game. No, we have not beat the game. What difficulty? Impossible. And it says you have to beat the game at least once. Let's try once more just without any use of beating the game and no impossible. So it would look like this. That would be the regular use and it works fine. Now at this point I would call it, it looks pretty good, but for practice sake, I wanna show you a scenario that might introduce bugs in your software if you're not careful. And I mentioned this in an earlier video and that is using and operators while also using or operators 
in the same complex conditional, meaning multiple things combined using operators. So here we have an example where we're checking for multiple things. Let's say, in theory, you could only choose easy, medium, and hard if you haven't beat the game. So you would basically say the difficulty has to be easy, medium, or hard, and beat game has to be false. And you can notice it's actually warning you here. Also, this white line, I think, is just saying, hey, this is the recommended max length for lines. Could probably adjust that or whatever, but it doesn't really matter. This is going to introduce a logical error where beat game could be true, but as long as you choose difficulty easy or medium, it's still going to let you through. So let me show you this. And it's going to compile because it's just a warning. Warnings don't prevent you from running the code. It's just some like extra beneficial tips from the compiler. Do you want to play the game? Have you beat the game? Yes. And in theory, based on what our code should be doing, if I say easy, medium, or hard, it should not evaluate to true, but it still evaluates to true. And you could just surround these in parentheses to fix this problem, but I just feel like it's still kind of difficult to understand the logic of this line. So I don't know, I tend to break it out when possible or just avoid ors and ands in the same line. But that's just personal preference. You can do whatever you want as long as you understand it. So now in this situation, what we want to happen should work. Have you beat the game? Yes. And if we say easy, medium, or hard, it does not let us play the game. So in that situation, it might do something else. Like say, hey, you have to play in possible mode or whatever. This is kind of a theoretical example, so I haven't built out the entire if statement, but you get the general idea. So that is how you would do that, but I'm going to opt for not doing that because I just don't like that. And it doesn't really make sense to force people to play a harder difficulty. I think you should still be able to play easy, medium, hard, no matter what, but that's just my opinion. Up next in our life, we want to talk about the switch statement, which is an alternative way of checking the value for something and doing certain things. So kind of like an if, else, if, else, but it's going to look a little bit different. Stay tuned for that. It's an important thing to understand because you're probably gonna run into it at some point in your lifetime, like in the next video. So stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out and subscribe.